My name is Sin Elias. I'm the proprietor of Crescent City Conjure, and I hope that you'll like this video. Please subscribe, click, like, share, tell your mama, tell your grandma about this video, uh, and let them all know what's going on. I think people who are in this lifestyle and in spirituality, especially African traditional religions, or have an interest in African traditional religions, should be aware of the word voodoo, traditions like Ifa, uh, traditions like Lukumi and Palomoyombe. These are all different Afro and Afro diasporic traditions. What we're going to be talking about today is specifically hoodoo. Hoodoo is a result of the transatlantic slave trade, and it is African American folk magic. For us to truly understand what hoodoo is, we have to go back in time to recognize and to analyze how it began, where it began, and then how it evolved and became what it is today. Starting with the colonization of Africa and his and his invasion of the Congo. And so what he does is he goes to Queen Elizabeth and he asks for a boat to be chartered because there are savages in the Congo of Africa and as an extension of Europe's compassion to all people, <laughs> he is going to go to the Congo and teach these savages some civility. He goes to the Congo people, the Congolese people. At first, he does try to hold classes, but it was never his intention to hold classes. He had to do that just to save face. His real intention was to harvest the rubber during the time for the Industrial Revolution around that time. And cars were just being invented and wheels were just being invented. So rubber was a really important thing. What he saw was free labor in the Congo. Of course, he couldn't go to Queen Elizabeth and say, I want some free slaves. Instead, he said he wants to teach these savages some civility. But he got his wish for the installation of Chateau slavery in Africa, expanding from the Congo into Western Africa, so Benin, Nigeria. So Hudu is a result of encaptured people on mainly the western coast of Africa, arriving mainly to the southern states of America. We see their original indigenous spiritual practices as a combination of many things because they came from many places. And further still, these African traditional religions became something different from tribe to tribe to tribe. So we're not talking about just one tradition. We're talking about a variation of many traditions. But we can kind of anchor our attention down on three main traditions, and that's Voodoo, Ifa, and Palomayombe. These three traditions, while they are different, share three main things in common. That is ancestral veneration. That our ancestors still play a large and active role in our lives and animism that every living thing has a consciousness and a spirit all its own and finally if the first two things are true then we're painting the picture of a very diverse and complex spiritual world resulting in the belief in magic that we are a part of that world as well that we are interacting with these things in real time magic and i think the sense of african traditional religion and then african-american spirituality isn't like something on Disney or Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Who do they collided with what was already here is the Protestant and the Catholic faith system. So we have indigenous spiritual belief systems of that are similar to Voodoo, Palo, Ifa, colliding with things that were already here, Catholic and Protestant faith. And this is not the first time this has happened in history and has a name for it. The name for it is synchronization. It means two things that could seem and polar opposites to each other needing to exist within the same environment. In this case, those encaptured people who had the mind and the heart of African traditional religions needed to be in this environment of colonialism. And so they had their belief systems pushed and molded and transformed forcibly, not by their own will, resulting in something new, something third, something new had to arise from that. So a third thing had to arise from that. It was impossible for their African traditional religions to stay intact because of their new environment. And it was impossible for them, for all of them to completely accept and digest this new spiritual faith. So there had to be some meeting ground and the meeting ground was hoodoo. And hoodoo, what you'll see is a combination of African traditional religions and Catholic and Protestant faith systems. One main thing that stands out with hoodoo that often catches people's attention is the use of the Bible as a spell book. In the tradition of hoodoo work and conjure, the Bible was the only book, only sacred text that was available during that time. So of course, it made its way into the tradition. The Bible itself is not a complete book. 
there's not one book. And we all, we know these things logically, but when we look at the full picture, it reveals a whole different story about the Bible. But it's an anthology of books, a lot of different books smashed together into one. So first, we're not really looking at a sequential story necessarily. We're looking at a bunch of different stories that produce a narrative. Secondly, the Bible was not originally written in, in English. I think that this is well known. It's originally written in Hebrew and Latin, which means that there are a lot of mistranslations within the Bible. And then there are some straight up replacements of words. And so if we look at the Council of Nicene for the uh, Constantine, then we look at some decisions that were made about what was in the Bible and how it was perpetuated to, to the people. When we re rewind the script a little bit and look at the Bible from a different perspective and also include what the Bible actually says, opposed to what we remember, in church, from the, what the preacher told us, is a different story. There's lots of magic that happens in the Bible. The Bible is chock full of magic, perhaps as much magic as some of these other grimoires that we read and we think are just strictly magical books. The Bible is a book on magic. One story that I want to bring to your attention is how Jesus cursed a fig tree because it wouldn't produce fruit out of season. Just as a practitioner, you got to understand the mentality. <laughs> I understand that mentality. <laughs> it's the mentality that you truly and honestly believe that you are a co-creator and that you have some say-so over natural processes. It's to say these processes have been existing way before I have, but by the will of my consciousness alone, I can manipulate this thing. And then I get pissed when I can't manipulate it because I can do it. <laughs> I know I can do it, so why is it not happening? It's just a very interesting um, way of looking at the Bible. Not only does it have stories about magic, it gives you step-by-step -step methods on how to complete the things. It tells you a story about a miracle, and then it tells you how to, pro how to produce that miracle. <laughs> Let's look at Psalms 51, which says, wash me with hyssop and I'll be whiter than snow. It's a story first about cleansing, right? And then it says, wash me in hyssop and I'll be whiter than snow. It's telling you how to do that. It's giving you an herb, the same things that we use in our own spell books. Let's look at the lesser and greater key of Solomon. And you see these seals that look very magical. I'm wearing one, actually. This is a seal of mercury. It has Hebrew written around it, which are Psalms. The Hebrew around the lesser and greater key of Solomon is our Psalms. And if you look up the verses, there are auxiliary prayers that go with them. Spells in the Bible are broken up into different books, different books will give you directions to return to this book to get further information. It's wild, it's wild. The more you look at the Bible, all I'm saying is that all of the information that you could possibly want about metaphysics and spirituality and uh, magic, honestly, it exists in the Bible. I personally believe that someone created the Bible as a purely a book of occultism, magic, spell work, and these things are not outside of our pursuit of the divine. All this talk about God and the divine and higher planes, that's what we're discussing. We're discussing how to experience those while we're still alive.